everyone, we are Raffles Rescue 1. The basic movement of our robot is done using tracks controlled by a large servo motor on both sides, with the EV3 brake fixed on top. In front of the tracks are a pair of downward facing color sensors that will detect the line for line tracking. These color sensors are spaced far enough apart that the line runs in between the areas that the color sensors are detecting, so that the ideal situation will be when both color sensors are detecting white, which is when the line is running directly through the middle of the robot. A day return shows how far off the robot is from the center of the line. The PID controller, which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, is used for the line tracking process, where we calculate the difference between the values of the two bottom color sensors and manipulate the steering of the robot based on this difference proportionately. Therefore, the robot is able to make its turns automatically. Since the ideal situation for the robot in line tracking mode is for the black line to be running exactly in between the two downward facing color sensors, when both color sensors register the color white, it will assume that it is following the line exactly and just move forward. These two color sensors are also used for green square detection, so the robot knows where to turn. Each color sensor will start the green color detection code to detect which side the green squares are on, so it can make the turn according to the green square. The color sensors will output HLS values, which stand for hue, lightness, and saturation. Each color will have its unique combination of HLS values, which is a 1 times 3 array. In order to increase the spontaneity of our robot, we define the color of interest as a 2 times 3 array that contains a minimum maximum range of each HLS values instead of fixed ones. To automate the process of finding the minimum maximum range, we also define a function that will automatically collate the sensor reading into the respective HLS lists and find the minimum and maximum values of each list using the inbuilt Python function. Therefore, by placing our robot on any color, we could obtain its calibrated range of values. Another function of color checking is defined to return a true or false statement. An iterative process is used to check whether the sensor reading lies within the calibrated color range earlier. A positive result will yield an output of true, which is used in all incidences of color detection to determine whether the subsequent actions of the robot will be triggered. In between these two color sensors is a forward-facing color sensor. This sensor is used to detect the obstacle. During the line tracking run, when there is an obstacle in front of the robot, the forward-facing sensor will detect the obstacle. The robot will move back and turn to get around the obstacle and return to the line. This is where the ultrasound sensor at the side of the robot comes in. This turning is segmented into many small parts by monitoring the reading from the ultrasound sensor. Once either the left or the right color sensor detects the black line, the code for obstacle avoidance terminates and the robot will return to its line tracking process. We use tracks in the movement of the robot to help the robot go over speed bumps without being offset too much from its original path and keep the robot stable in its run. The color sensors and the claw are also raised higher off the ground so that they would not be caught on the speed bumps. Since they are a significant distance in front of the tracks, which means that the tracks would not be able to lift these components before encountering the speed bumps. This sensor will detect the blue rescue kit. As the robot moves through the line tracking zone, the claws will be lifted up to avoid blocking the run of the robot. There are two static axles in front of the robot, just at the height of the rescue kit, that can help to sweep the blue cube in front of the color sensor for detection. The value detected by the forward sensor during its line tracking process is first calibrated. The rescue kit will be detected once the forward sensor reading deviates too much from the calibration value. The robot will pick the rescue kit up. 
Rubber pieces are also affixed to the claws to help it grip the rescue kit by increasing friction. Initially, the claw was not lined with rubber. When testing, we found that the two points of contact it had with the object were not sufficient and the object would slip through the claw. Hence, we decided to add the rubber in alternating orientations, some up and down as well as some facing inwards and outwards to increase the points of contact between the claw and the objects. The two downward facing color sensors are also responsible for detecting the entrance and exit of the evacuation zone, so the robot knows when to stop the line tracking code and start the ball detection code. Once in the zone, the robot will start the zone spiraling code, which ensures that the robot covers all available areas of the zone. It is kept within the boundaries using the colors at the edge of the zone. The downward facing color sensors will ensure the colors and know that it is at the edge of the zone and will move back and turn instead of continuing on straight. Throughout its spiraling, the forward facing color sensor will constantly be checking for the presence of balls. This sensor will also determine the color of the balls, which will be used in the sorting of the balls later. The claw funnels the balls into the way of the color sensor, ensuring that any ball that the robot meets will be detected. The claw is built in a way that the same motor can be used to close the claw and lift the claws up. When the motor moves, it turns the gears that close the claws. Once the claws are closed, these gears cannot turn anymore. If the motor continues to run, the gears further up will turn, which lifts the claw up. The sorting mechanism is built on tracks that are connected to a motor. It is designed to catch the balls when the balls are lifted by the claws. Based on the colour of the ball determined by the forward-facing colour sensor, it will turn either clockwise or anti-clockwise, which will determine to which side of the robot the ball is sorted into. It is placed low enough that the claw can reach it when lifted up, but high enough that it is still has space to turn without being blocked by the balls, which are already collected. The gate is designed such that it falls open on its own due to gravity and is secured by scotch tape, so that less force is needed to open the gate. The triggers to open the gate are the beams at the back of the robot. When the robot backs up into the deposit zone, the beams are pushed in, which in turn causes the gate to fall open. The beams are made to be of different lengths, so that the gates can be opened individually and at different times to allow the live victims to enter the deposit zone first. Once a sufficient number of balls are collected and the deposition process is carried out successfully for at least twice, the robot will start to exit the zone. The robot will first move to the edge of the map and turn 90 degrees in the clockwise direction to start the line tracking process. The forward sensor will be used to detect the color of the exit strip. Once the exit strip is detected, the robot will move to the center of the strip and turn anti-clockwise. Afterwards, the normal line tracking code will be activated again and the robot will continue moving forward.